Hi guys, how are you going? It's Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel and as always guys, you want to be autodidactic because it means to be self-educated and you want to be self-educated because you do not want to be learning what these guys are trying to teach us, believe me. Okay, uh, thanks for tuning in guys. Today's uh, video is on the um, World's Fair in Sydney. Yesterday I did one on the World's Fair in Melbourne. This is the World's Fair in Sydney. It was actually called the Sydney Exhibition, but it's recognised as a World's Fair. And what we are looking at here is called the Garden Palace. Now, this is a massive structure, as you can see. And the official narrative says that it was built in eight months. Alright, so we're going to investigate this one today guys, so stay tuned. Okay guys, so here we go, the Sydney International Exhibition. Okay, so it was in 1879 and it was, it was the first World's Fair in the Southern Hemisphere. So it was actually classified as a World's Fair by the uh, organisation behind them that, that tells them that yes, they are a World's Fair, whatever they do. Um, after being granted governance in 1850s, the Australian colonies, Victoria and New South Wales saw a steady economic growth as a result of the discovery, exploration and exploration of gold reserves. After 20 years, proposals were made to organise an exhibition modelled on the great exhibitions of Europe with an aim to promote commerce, industry, along with art, science and education. In 1879, Melbourne filed the plan to Parliament, however, Sydney wanted wanted to be the first and managed to organise an exhibition in record time. So there we go, the Sydney International Exhibition opened in the autumn of 1879, but it wasn't really universal and therefore not officially recognised by the Bureau of International Expositions. Melbourne decided to start their exhibition shortly after the one in Sydney and so participants could transport their exhibits during the winter of 1880. After the exhibitions, many of the exhibit, exhibits were selected to, to be on display in the Technological, Industrial and Sanitary Museum, now the Powerhouse Museum. The Garden Palace itself was used by the government until a fire destroyed it in 1882. So, okay, this is the um, the um, Garden Palace, <coughs> excuse me, the Garden Palace, uh, which was, it, as I'll show you, I'm going to show you, it's an amazing structure. Um, but it was built, the official narratives tell us it was built uh, in eight months. Yes, eight months. Okay, so um, now, as you can see, the main feature of Sydney Exhibition was an ornate building, the Garden Palace, which was over 244 metres long and had a floor space of over 112,000 metres. Uh, so for people uh, in the US and so, it's uh, about three times that in feet. So, you know, over sort of 330,000 feet. Designed by the colonial architect James Barnett, the building included 4.5 million feet of timber, 2.5 million bricks and 243 tons of galvanised corrugated iron all of which was lost when the Garden Palace was destroyed by fire, as they all are, guys, in 1882. Okay, and so, yeah, there's a lot of materials to use to build this building. Um, I just found this interesting. This is Unpacking the French Trophy, Sydney International Exhibition, Australian Illustration, 1879. These are people who are unpacking the exhibition. They all look to be, or half of them look to be Chinese, these people maybe, I'm not sure. But yeah, they're unpacking. So what are we, so we're supposed to think that what, like France is sending through all these antiques and stuff that we can display? I mean, that's that, well, but 
kind of like the display of their um, exhibition. And this is sort of what upon angle I want to get into is, you know, with all these World Fairs across the world, um, you know, what are they what are they for and what are they doing? It seems sorry, where am I here? Uh, Sorry guys, I just refreshed that. Looks like I've lost my page. Here we go. Uh, Garden Palace, the beauty time for God. And that's the building there, guys. You can see, look at this huge dome. Sorry, my computer's resetting. Okay, um, so you can see this huge dome and all the you know, turrets and structures and flags and everything. And this is uh, the Daily Telegraphs. Um, and the gallery is loading let's begin it here okay so sorry guys Sydney's garden stood for just three years from 1839 to 1882 uh, let's go hope it's loaded this is uh, just a map of the actual size of the grounds this is the building, the Garden Palace, there's some more buildings down here. Uh, but yeah, that's a great chunk of land. Next picture here is a construction picture, guys. So this is what I wanted to show you. Okay, so this is uh, the construction of the palace for the International Exhibition was big news around the nation. Illustration, because you know, it's not a photo or anything, it's an illustration from the Australian sketcher, uh, from the Australian, I don't know who the Australasian sketcher is, um, but yeah, so this is um, what we're told is a construction picture. Um, as you can see, um, it doesn't look like there's many workers around. Um, there's a bit of a horse and cart going by, but that's on a road. There's no construction happening. There's no, um, uh, 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 <coughs> excuse me, there's no, um, you know, like stone, brick, wood, there's no piles of, you know, supplies, that's the word. So there's no supplies anywhere, you know, so what are they building this thing with? And as you can see, there's people just wandering around everywhere on the streets. This statue is already built and it's set apart from the building. And we're told this is a construction uh, illustration. Um, I would say that's fiction. You can make up your own mind, and uh, I will show you some information to uh, let you know why I think that is fiction. And here is a second one uh, that is also a construction of the Garden Palace 1879, designed by James Barnett. Uh, the building was put up in only eight months at a cost of £191,800 in only eight months. <laughs> you said that twice. Um, as you can see in this, um, apart from you know the fall of the land, which means that this was not a level, it wasn't a level piece of land, guys. Look at this. If you're going to build a building of that magnitude, you need a solid foundation, and a solid foundation that means you need at least to start with a level piece of land. But as you can see, that's not level at all. Um, and yeah, we've got everything drawn as wood here. Uh, so as you saw before, you know, he needed, um, you know, to build this, they were looking at, uh, sorry, it was, you know, 4.5 million feet of timber, 2.5 million bricks and 243 tons of galvanized iron. Okay, so what do we have here? Sorry guys, my computer's a little bit slow tonight. Uh, this is a garden palace. Okay, this is just a bit more on the garden palace. Um, basically says everything you know we've already seen. 1879, building three years, blah 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 blah. Uh, but I just you know see that's what we get. This is the whole page. So there's not much information. There's nothing about the construction, uh, construction plans, who built it, how how it was built, anything. You know, we receive silly pictures like this. Uh, I've got this in another. I'll show you this later. But as you can see, the levels, two story here, one story here. And that's completely different. Um, so yeah, there's no information on this. I, I did a lot of searching. 
uh, and it's yeah, it's just really hard to find anything on um, you know, how they built this, where the stuff came from, who built it, how it was constructed. You know, we always get an architect's name, and that's it. But there's never any architect's drawings. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is okay. The Garden Palace was built from Oregon timber shipped in from the USA. It took eight months to build, with 200 men working the first round clock shifts, even by arc light at night. The cruciform shaped building stretched 800 feet north to south and 500 feet east to west, intersected intersected by a huge 31 foot diameter dome. So they're telling us that they have imported from the US, uh, sorry, it was 4. million feet of timber. That's what they've imported. They've brought it in by ship. This is in 1879, guys. We're talking sail ships. Um, like, really? That does not make sense at all. Like, how, how, like, really? They've imported that all from Oregon timber shipped in from the USA. All pictures of the building. And as they're telling us, so this story is there to tell us that it was built from wood because, as you will see, it was, they tell us it was destroyed by fire. It was raised to the ground, like so many of these ancient master pieces, pieces <laughs> ancient, sorry, gosh, old world masterpieces, you know, they're, they're all just raised to the ground, especially for the world fairs, um, yeah, but you can see, like, like, see this, and they're telling you that what they're trying to tell us is the same as what they tell us, you know, for Boston and Chicago and all these other world fairs, that they're basically a wooden facade, you know, a wooden structure with a, a brick and stone facade. And they were just built to be temporary buildings, but I mean, look at that thing. Here it is again. This here's a horse and cart that obviously brought those all that you know timber and rock and brick and iron, and not to mention the glass guys. Not to mention the glass. Uh, that's it in the background there. Here we go. Some old photos. I mean, it just looks like it's a palace, like they call it, it's a garden palace. Another picture here. This is said to be the dome being constructed. This, look, I don't know. This, this bit especially. This looks like it's been made altered to sort of look like an old photo. But even if not, um, this all this. If this is a photo, it's just all it really shows is that they're re doing something to the dome, recovering it. Um, here's some more pictures. Okay, sorry guys, just got interrupted. Um, so yeah, this is the site. I mean, you can see how massive that building is compared. I mean, this you know here looks like a two-story building, and this just is <laughs> insanely big. You know, compared with everything around it, built in eight months, guys. Here's some more shots. Nice obelisk here. Uh, it's just a big panorama shot of the whole thing. As you can see, of course, there's antennas on top of all these turret-type structures. Uh, they put flags on them all. This is what's still standing today. These are just the front gates and uh, one of the statues. This is inside, and as you can see, look at this architecture. And you know, this a lot of this, you know, looks like it could be wood. Who knows, but I mean, you know, they've they brought in all this wood from America. You know, millions of feet of wood. And that, I mean, really? And then who, who's put it all together? Who's built it? And, um, you know, who made the nails? And the bolts and things. Now, these pictures here, guys, like this is uh, said to be a uh, the statue of Queen Victoria. As you can see, nice stone with all stone around it. No, it looks like it's you know that's it's coming up from that floor, but the, uh, the floor below this, by the looks of it, you can see there's a hole there. So who knows how big this was and what it was, and had they just put this on the top of it? 
Um, <clears throat> but when you start to look at what these exhibitions were, guys, I mean, apart from the fact there's no one in here, and they say this was a really successful exhibition with 1.3 million people coming through it. In all these photos, there's no one in them. Um, it just looks like they're displaying stuff. <laughs> what I'm thinking is this is just stuff they've found and they've you know procured from all the buildings that they've found after the, the devastation and they're just putting it on display. I mean, look at it all. It's just rows of it and it's just all this stuff and lamps and God knows what. This is the dome. I mean, this looks to me like steel. It may not be, but it looks like steel. And they did say there was a lot of steel used, so I'd say this is steel. Um, so how are they making that? Who made it? Where did it come from? Here's some pictures. And this is um, this site is called Sydney Architecture, by the way. Um, and these are the architecture pictures we get. It's basically the same picture once it's in black and white. Um, and as you can see, look at the height difference from here. Uh, that's, that's the level there. We've got a whole other level underneath here. Same in this because it's just a copy. <clears throat> uh, some more drawings. And there's a, a drawing by the looks of it. Lots of little painting. You know, lots of people sort of walking into this amazing building. And here, this is the fire. There's only one, you know, again, painting of the fire. And this one too. Another painting. Okay, so let's get into this. So um, the main feature of the Sydney exhibition was an ornate building, the Garden Palace, which was over 244 metres long <clears throat> and had a floor space, <coughs> excuse me, of 112,000 square metres, designed by the colonial architect, blah, 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 took this many bricks and this much iron. So we know that the wood was shipped in from uh, the USA, they're telling us. So what about the bricks? Where did the bricks come from? Because what did he have? Um, it was 2.5 million bricks. And all put up in eight months, guys. Uh, the industrial development in the early 1840s, there was still, there was little to suggest that the area was about to be transformed into an industrial conurbation. I don't know what that word is. <laughs> As brickmasters trundled their families and sh uh, chattels along the new town's King Street in search of the new El Dorado, the only indicators of industry was the presence of tanneries, leatherworks, banks on the she oak. So, basically, in the 1840s, there was no brickworks. As we go down here, beneath the thin layer of surface days, the early pioneers soon discovered deep bands of pine brick making shales belonging to the Winamata group, the brick makers equivalent of gold. Shale, which is the appearance of slate, must be crushed and ground into dirt before it can be pressed into bricks. So they found this, and then it says down here, um, more than a century passed before the houses again encroached on the brick for... Uh, Hang on, sorry, that's the wrong bit. Let me read this. For the more prosperous and entrepreneurial brickmakers of the St. Peter's Markville Temple District, it was only towards the end of the 19th century, with the formation of the Limited Liabilities Company, that sufficient, in, sufficient investment capital enabled production units to become large enough to meet the demand. Okay, so. It was only towards the end of the 19th century, so towards the end of the 1800s was when the brick industry was able to actually meet the demand of the growing colony. This is what they're telling us. And then when they say that, they're talking about building houses, public buildings, all this kind of stuff, infrastructure. And But, but you know, in 1879, these people had, they just got 2.5 million bricks. Um, but unsurprisingly, many family businesses failed and the ownership of brick firms was gradually concentrated into the hands of relatively 
relatively few companies, the transition which took nearly a century was spurred by short-term fluctuations in the, tri in the trade cycle and catastrophic depressions in the 1840s and the 1890s. So this was built, you know, 1879, so there was depression in the brick industry and it, that would have been the middle, but even up here it says that, you know, until the end of the 19th century, they didn't even have enough bricks. So where did the bricks come from? 2.5 million of them. Okay, and what else do we see here? Oh, what else do we see? Sorry, it's the wrong page. Uh, da, da, da. 243 tons of galvanized corrugated iron. Okay, so again, I've searched and searched for the source of this iron and have found nothing, but I did find this. Now, this is the history of steel manufacturing in Australia by Steel Force. Okay, so steel manufacturing in Australia has had a checkered history following the discovery of deposits of iron at Iron Knob in South Australia in 1840. The industry had an uh, inauspicious start with several unsuccessful attempts to produce pig iron from steel in South Australia, Victoria, New South Wales and Tasmania. Because of poor quality iron ore, because of poor quality iron ore and coke, as well as inadequate technical expertise, the local product could not compete with the steel imported from Britain and by the late 1870s all of the Australian ironworks had been abandoned. Okay, so this building, the Garden Palace, was built in 1879 Okay, and it needed 243 tons of galvanized cor uh, corrugated iron but as we see here by the late 1870s all of the Australian ironworks had been abandoned so this was built and uh, literally as the industry was collapsing uh, but they managed to get all the iron they needed okay so things are not adding up here guys so this is what I wanted to show you we see these pictures um, you know, of, of construction, okay, wood frames and that. Uh, this isn't a photo, by the way, this, you can see the signature down here. This is a, a drawing or a lithograph or something. Um, and, you know, this construction photo here as well. But, you know, these are drawings, okay, this is fiction, because when you look at the facts, they cannot explain where the materials came from and, and again look at those sites there's no materials there there's no you know there's no work site it's just this drawing of, of an abandoned you know there might be a few bits of wood here or something by the looks of it but seriously this is built with by guys just you know what lots of people from Sydney, which was, you know, still less than a hundred years old from colonization. I think the, you know, the population, um, all I could find out was in 1840, it was about 40,000 and by 19, I think it was 10 that it hit a million. So 1880, I mean, you know, could, could conceivably say a quarter of a million people, but this is to build this building, you would need a lot of people and hand tools guys and horse and carts and unpaved roads how they get everything in here how they're building who's building the nails who's building the hammers and the saws you know where's there's, there's no iron industry where's all this stuff coming from and that's kind of my point here um that we have these pictures you know look at the, the craftsmanship how are they getting that up there you would need cranes and things but there's no cranes in any of those construction photos the painting. So this is just some more pictures of it, guys. Uh, this is just the gates of it. In the background, this is the uh, statue of Queen Victoria, and again, you can see all these massive, massive high roofs, all the ornate, you know, finishes. Uh, again, here, this is a drawing. 
and there's lots of people everywhere and you can see they're all dressed up like they're the sort of you know the upper class gentry you've got the top hats and the tails and stuff um, but a million people where are they all coming from they're catching ships from you know Europe and taking three months to get here to see this because it you know back in 1880 there wasn't that many people in the upper class in Australia that's the thing well, that's a photo of someone sitting out there in a top hat. Uh, this is another photo of the interior, and this just looks so set up. They've got all these people. They they did completely different clothing to what we see in the in the drawings. You know, like they just look like they're a collection of just I don't know, just normal people, housewives or something, and they're just sitting around for this photo. Um, here's another one. You, know, you can see, like this building was huge. Uh, this is, inside, they had different um, exhibitions. They had like for Victoria, they had a Tasmania one, they had a Spain. And again, it just looks like they've just. You know, it looks like these are the spoils of you know of war. Like they've just gone out and they've. They're just displaying everything that they've found, everything that's cool. But that, that's what that, that's the feeling I'm getting about these world fairs is they were just to show off what they'd found, you know, technology, different, you know, arts, and you know, there's obviously lots of paintings around and you know, pottery and things like that, and you know, different types of antiquity. Uh, here we go again to the end here. Of the, these photos, um, this is when it was, after it was burnt down, of course it burnt, that's, I think that's part of the thing, this is why they tell us all the time that, you know, these buildings were built, basically they were wood structures with a facade, I mean, you know, facades don't stand like that for, you know, on their own for, for a start, um, but I think that's just part of the fiction, is they're telling us that they're basically wooden structures because so many of them they, they tell us burned down but I don't think they burnt down they, they clearly look like they've been flattened by something some kind of you know I don't know weapon or something who knows but, but basically the story just doesn't make sense it just really doesn't make sense guys so here's a palace garden palace some more, as you can see, not many people around in this photo. But I mean, look at the massive structures, dirt roads, of course. Uh, another shot. This is a drawing from inside, but as you can see, like you know, like I said, I've got all these paintings and you know, a few obelisky things, and these just just looks like it's a display of what they've, you know, what they've acquired. From what they found when they got to this this country that was devastated and, and whatever population was was here that you know were the progenitors of this you know all this society and this artwork and this uh, architecture you know they'd obviously been wiped out or at least you know decimated to a, to a large degree and I mean maybe you know all these stories about you know Populations being wiped out by smallpox and diseases that people brought. Maybe they weren't, you know, just the people we were told they were. Maybe they weren't just indigenous people. Maybe they were, I mean, indigenous people, but not the natives that we're told about. Maybe there were populations, and we hear the stories everywhere of, you know, Caucasians in, in countries all around the world, and, you know, and the same with, you know, Asians and, and blacks and ne or Negroids or whatever. And, call them that's politically correct um, but basically everyone you know you know the, the um, Native American Indians are basically the same as the people from Siberia I mean and lots of Asians um, yeah so they've just been messing with populations and, and who knows what they found when they got here but it looks like they stole it all and put it on display and said yeah this is us here's your new history Another shot of the statue of Queen Victoria. This one, this is actually a newspaper clipping. Um, as you can see, we've got a few drawings. 
And again in the drawings, lots of people. In the photos, hardly any people. So I've got, so again, there you go, drawing a look at all the people, they're everywhere, and, and again, they're all in, you know, their finery, their, their, you know, tails with their top hats and their canes, you know, obviously all, you know, well-to-do people, but this is in 1879 in Sydney, Australia. This was, uh, what, 25 years after they stopped bringing convicts in, so one generation, um, I mean, really, there weren't that many well-to-do people in Australia that probably to fit in this picture. And like I said before, what were they doing? Like taking a three-month, six-month boat trip from Europe or somewhere to come here to see a few trinkets? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Again, just the scale of this thing in proportion to the rest of the landscape. I mean, look at it. Eight months, they built that in eight months, they're telling us. Uh, again, look at this, you know, statues, busts, and all these sort of trinkety things. That's an interesting symbol type thing. Um, you know, it just, it looks like they've just found all this, and you know, it's like a museum, and, and this, is, this is what museums, I think, are, and, and we know they are. You look at the British Museum, it's full of, you know, the stuff from ancient Egypt. Um, so is that what museums are? Is this how they started, that they were literally collecting all the old world art and, and, and you know, uh, things that they were making and antiquitec and other items and, and displaying them as their own and then because this building actually did turn into um, after the World's Fair for the couple of years that it was still standing before they burnt it or destroyed it um, it was a museum and they say they lost you know <laughs> they say the main thing that they lost uh, in, the, in the fire not all this stuff, what they lost was um, the native Aboriginal um, collection. So basically, the stuff they didn't want us to see, I guess. Here again, that's this collection. You know, I've got pianos here. I mean, what are we to think that they're just bringing these in from all over the world, or what? There's suddenly a piano making industry in Australia. It's just it's pretty ridiculous when you really start to think about it, get it in context. Awesome buggy, photo, no people, dirt road. Um, now this is a good shot, this is the building in the background and as you can see here, this is what they were building, wooden little structures, one story high. But, you know, these are the outbuildings, but we're supposed to believe they built this in eight months and then all they could come up with for some outbuildings were these structures. Uh, there's another drawing, that's a very nice one. Obviously it's not a photo but you can just see the scale of it. And you can notice you know, the landline there. Another drawing, lots of people. Really nice drawing of the building. So it's like back then they what you know they couldn't hide it because people had seen it, so they turned it into oh this big story. Yeah, I was built for an exhibition. I'll look at these pictures with all these people. And here's another photo. I mean, look at that thing, guys. It looks like like what it's called. It looks like a palace. I mean, that would you know see that on any major river in any major European capital or the White House. Again, just these displays, guys. I mean, it's just, it looks like trink, you know, like the stuff they've just found. And again, this is a photo, and there's no people. Again, this, whoops. Um, this it looks like a drawing. I'm pretty sure it's a drawing. Um, you can see the grandeur of it, all the art, all the finishes. This is the Tasmanian exhibition. So what is this? The stuff they found in Tasmania and brought it up. Let's see Victoria down here. I mean, is this what they're, what they're displaying? All the stuff they found in these, you know, devastated and abandoned buildings and cities, towns. Just don't know. 
So here, Adelaide, South Australia. So they must spend an Adelaide run as well. Oops. Sorry, computer's being a little bit silly. Uh, here we go. This is another drawing, but again, it shows it that, that what's on display is just all this stuff. All this stuff. Just like, just stuff. <laughs> These have got little statues and things. I mean, it's, it's, it's very bizarre. Uh, again, this is a photo. There's no one in it. As you can see, this is Rome. We've got statues, you know, bus, Roman type stuff. Where did it all come from? Again, did they ship it in from Rome? Did Rome just decide to, you know, donate all this stuff to Australia? You know, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. It doesn't sound right. New Zealand exhibit, and again, there's just you know, rows and rows of just all this stuff. Where did it all come from? I've seen that one. Oh uh, yeah, another one. Just, you know, cabinets full of bits and pieces. I don't know, jewelry, who knows what, types of finery. This little statue thing in the background. Victorian court. Drawing, so there's people in it. Um, just, yeah, I don't know, pictures on the wall, so, you know, old world furniture. Um, okay, so this is a drawing again, so it's full of people, and this is the floor below that statue of Queen Victoria, and it's this, you know, this. There's obviously a fountain with you know water coming out, but this doesn't seem to match what we saw or what was above. Um, you know, so was this whole bit added? Who knows? But again, because the drawing is full of people, but the photo is it. <laughs> Here's a photo, empty. But again, just these displays of stuff. It's like you know the first museum kind of thing. Look what we found. Uh, the Victorian Court Sydney International Exhibition from the Illustrated Australian News, 31st October 1879. Drawing, so it's got some people in it. And again, I like this statues. I don't know what this is, some kind of bottles or something. I don't know, some, is that <laughs> rope? I don't know. Pictures, mirrors. I mean, what is this stuff? All right, guys, so that's it. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, yeah, this was, I did a, a video uh, yesterday on the Melbourne World's Fair. This was Sydney. This was a year earlier than Melbourne. And as you can see, it just doesn't make sense. We saw those construction photos, but as I showed you, you know, the, the, the materials they say they need, um, they, they just weren't available. And the wood, you know, bringing that much wood in on ship that would, Eight months, and I mean, another thing is it was built in eight months. And um, basically, if you look at uh, Wikipedia, it says that um, you know they basically came up with it and you know put the submission in sort of you know eight months before whatever the Sydney exhibition opened in the autumn of 1879. But after, uh, after 20 years, proposals were made for organizing an extension modeled on the great exhibitions of Europe with an aim to promote commerce and industry along with art science. 1879, Melbourne filed a plan to the Parliament. However, Sydney wanted to be the first. So this is in 1879, and this 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 exhibition was in 1879. So the so the Garden Palace was finished and completed in 1879. So they say eight months, but if the wood came from America, you've got to take another few months off, don't you? Because that wood's got to, you know, and that that's if the wood was sitting there ready to just throw on a ship. You're talking, you know, from the Americas to Australia in the 1880s. I don't know. What, five, six months maybe? Maybe less, I don't know. But definitely, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. And as you saw, you know, the steel industry was non-existent. It, was, it had shut down pretty much. Um, you know, there, there wasn't enough bricks that even to build the colony for, you know, the infrastructure and housing that they needed. But, you know, this guy, you know, wanted, you know they decided to build this 
this building and um, they just magically got 4.5 million feet of timber shipped in from the Americas, 2.5 million bricks when there weren't enough to uh, for the colony to, to keep expanding as it needed, and 243 tonnes of galvanised corrugated iron when the iron industry in Australia at the time was literally shutting down and it was dead by 1880. So um, I'll leave it up to you guys. What do you think of those construction photos? Do you think that they're real or are they just fiction? Because none of them are photos, they're all drawings. So, but again, I hope I've showed you some uh, some evidence that um, you know that what they're telling us is is not true. It's false. They're making stuff up and they're putting out. I mean, it's very 1984, isn't it? You know, they just they hide the truth. They make it up, put it out there, and like, gradually over time, they just change the narrative, change the story, and change what people believe until the past disappears. And that's what they're trying to do. Um, but as you can see, their stories do not make sense. They are complete fiction. All right, guys, so I hope you liked that one. Um, that was uh, Sydney World's Fair 1879 History Reset. Guys, thanks for watching. Please uh, comment, like, subscribe, and share this content if you find it interesting. And as always, guys, be autodidactic because self-education is the way forward. All right, cheers for watching, guys. I uh, really appreciate everyone who subscribed and left me comments, um, and I'll catch you. on the next upload. Bye for now.